So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to go off and go through what's been happening on 2017 R1 um, for the camp. Um, first, first of all, okay, this, we've had some quite a few changes to the um, the geometry management. Um, so there's been quite a lot of changes that's that's been introduced for the geometry management to overcome um, some possible issues that you may have had. Um, previously with the um, multiple pieces of stock um, on the same project so so basically what we've got now is that there's there's been updates to the piece management and it's not limited anymore by the project um, so any of those restrictions that we had previously where it was limited to the project where you had multiple or one piece and additional auxiliary pieces and when you were trying to use them all together, any limitations have all been removed now. Um, so any of the pieces that are available for all of the machining uh, now. So you'll see this selection method when we go into the, um, the project settings, um, it's gonna be slightly different now. And, and also when you're actually coming to select the piece or the obstacle or the stock for machining, it's gonna be slightly different. Um, and what you've got, what this allows us to do is that because we've got this, and uh, we've separated this out, um, there's no longer um, one generic mesh that used to be link, linked to the project. We've back to having separate meshes and separate meshing tolerances available for each one of the pieces, obstacles or stock that you want to use for your um, machining. Um, the face groups that anybody possibly saw on the project have, um, have actually dismissed now. We've got rid of those and actually the face groups are managed from within the operation itself. And you're going to see examples of how this is this working shortly. And finally, the, the quality factor um, is now linked to the operations again. This used to be linked to the project uh, and, and what people tend to use this for, if you aren't aware of what this actually does, is that the quality factor is a, it's effectively a scaling factor that's been applied to the, some of the toolpath parameters in the background. Um, it's mainly used for small components, very small pieces, where you're trying to get more points on the toolpath to increase the, um, um, the quality of the piece and, and the machining um, finish. And what happened is that if you put a, a value of one, it's just one to one, but if you start to put, increase that quality factor of five, 10, um, or, or, or anything like that, what happened is that it, we scale everything up, so we scale the part, we scale the piece by one, two, five, ten times, and what happens is we calculate the toolpath, but in the background what we do, we scale, the, scale everything back down by the same amount to actually increase the number of points on the toolpath. So that's why we use this um, quality factor, but it's now linked to individual operations again. So moving on to the geometry management, the interface has changed now. It's slightly different for when you're actually selecting the, the pieces uh, or the geometry that you want to machine or work to. Um, the actual CAM navigator and the model, model manager is, is the same, um, but the, the actual way that we select this, so the new piece, stop and obstacle selection um, is this is the interface for it, so you get a list of available geometry or faces or anything like that that you want to select from the bottom half of the dialog box and you just move them up to the top um, and then you can actually change them on the fly if you wanted to. Um, it's the same with the face list selection. Um, so the face list selection, you've got the options of now which is, which is a lot more um, enhanced for working with face lists or drive surfaces so anybody that's got five axis machining or anybody that uses the ISO machining you can now mix and match working with face lists and drive surfaces and the current versions that you have at the moment you can work with one or the other but you can't work with both um, so that's changed for this uh, where, the, where the face lists are um, we talked about the groups so the groups are actually defined in the in the operation so that if, what you've got on the previous releases is that you've got the um, um, okay so I'm just going to mute somebody what you've got on the previous uh, version is that you've 
Um, the, the, you've got the group list, the face group is actually in the project level. Um, now it's actually inside the, the operation itself. So what happens is that when you're selecting the, the face lists um, or anything that you want to machine to, you can reorder it and you can actually set it to be protected, to be ignored, whatever the offsets are inside of this uh, dialog box. And as for the project itself, there's been a revised user interface for this, so it's slightly smaller. Um, you still have to select a, a reference piece and a reference stock, uh, one default one. But once you've done that, everything there else is then done within the project itself. Uh, sorry, in the operation itself. So if we have a look at the um, a small movie of this, so what we can see that's happening here is that we've got some piece stock obstacles defined on this on this file uh, with with face lists and everything so you can change um, you've got the tolerances set in there so all the information has been set on the PC this is what you're already doing um, so this is the same method that you're already currently aware of but it's just different when you start to come and add the operations so um, from within the operation so first of all you add the operation so this is where you're still defining that uh, that reference or that master model obstacle okay so this is where you see the slight difference in the change so you one note to to be aware of is that you can only have one reference piece in the project uh, it will warn you of this so if you have more than one um, you've got to remove it but once that restrict when you once you've got that defined then you have uh, no problems with this that you can then add the operation and from within the within the operation you then just pick the pieces that you want to work with. So we've got the selections here, one already added, but you've got any number available to you. So these are all the list available at the bottom, which was in your model manager. And you just select the ones that you want, move them up to the top, and then you select them for the um, operation. The same rule applies for the stock and the same rule will apply for the um, obstacles as well. So effectively what you are doing is that you're selecting the um, operations to or the pieces, any geometry that you want to work with, just moving it up to the top and then you can do it as and when you want to work with. What you can do as well is you can change the properties of this, so this is where you can actually change the, um, even though it's been moved up to the top, you can change the tolerances inside of here you can change um, so you're actively move, changing the properties live on the on the piece when you're doing this for each one of the operations so if you did want to change the any of the tolerances and so on you could do now it does work slightly differently when you're working with face lists so we're just going to do a, a slightly different operation now but we're going to work with a face list rather than working with the solids. So, so it's, it's the same principle again. We've got a, a face list or a set of face lists available to us already created that we select what we want to use, move it up to the top area and then you've got that piece to be used. Now if you don't want to actually create it and you haven't got that face list created, what you can do is that you can select the model itself and you can actually define it within the selection process so you're adding it on the fly effectively um, so you just have to define a face list which we've created on the fly and then you can move that one up to the top okay so we're working with face lists interactively so we're just going to see a slight difference on this now so there's the operation calculated um, we're going to add another operation now. So, similar process. I've had a new operation. We're going to work with the face list once again. So, this is where we're going to work in with different types of face lists. And they can easily be ordered and managed as you want them because. You must be aware that 
uh, that you probably may be aware that you can change the uh, the order of this in the tree um, and it will affect the, the outcome of the machining uh, path so if you wanted to move it up and down the tree you can do so we're adding some more facelifts changing the offsets as and when you want to do it and it could be that you want to be machining some areas and you want to check with different um, offsets for the obstacles so once again moving it up and down the, the tree will affect how it's been managed okay so we're going to protect this one to within three millimeters so as i said it's quite easy to manage all of this um, pieces faces and what you want to uh, to do for, for machining the five axis and this is a similar interface for the iso machining um, we've, we've talked about the drive surfaces now we can work with the face this already created so we just same as what we were doing on the previous one on the operation we're selecting the face list that we want to work with move them up but if the face list isn't being created we could also actually select the faces directly from any of the models that's on the screen okay so you can work with any of the models that's there uh, and just pick the faces interactively um, so this is something that you weren't able to do on your current release uh, and it, man it means you've got a lot of flexibility on this um, ISO on this 5 axis machine of what you want to machine so there's really any limitation that we previously had has, um, has, has disappeared ok now just finally um, just to add on to this you will see this dialog box as well pop up when you go into the kinematics so you've got the you've got your options of what you want to use for the kinematics as well whether it be the piece obstacle the stock and you've got any of those um, options available to you inside of there as well so it is slightly different to what you've probably already got but it's just a case of moving up um, from that bottom area what you want to be checking against or what you want to see in the side of the kinematics and once you hit that um, okay it will then populate it to the kinematics for you okay so we're going to move on and we're going to go into the, the 2d machining side of things um, there's been some um, changes to the to 2d machining we've introduced a, a new profiling strategy which is um, basically replacing the, the mill strategy. It's, it's, it's a direct update to that. Uh, and we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about some, um, some conversions from that mill strategy to the profiling, but the mill has now become profiling. Um, and also we mentioned on the, on the 2016 R2 seminars that we were talking about some facilities that were under preview and the waveform was one of those. Um, well, I'm just going to show you one of these new strategies as well. So this is a also you've currently got pocket strategy, but there is going to be a pocketing one that's introduced um, probably on the on the next release. Um, but I'm going to give you a slight slight preview of this. If anybody wants to test it, um, by all means get in touch touch with us and we can grant you a license for this. But this this pocketing has the waveform pocketed on 2D inside of there, and it's a slight difference to the existing pocket pocketing. So this is something that you're going to be seeing that is going to be coming as well. Um, we're always trying to do a speed improvement. It's a lot quicker this one um, in, in relation to it's calculated on some of the, the passes. Um, there's a much greater control over the obstacle management. Uh, a lot of improvements on that, which you're going to see as well. And, and we talked about this conversion. So there is a conversion. Uh, and I'm going to show you this in, in a couple of slides time about how we convert any old um, mill strategies and it gets converted to uh, just profiling but it will change the status of it that we're going to go through anyway so looking at this in a bit more detail um, there's a lot more reliability on this now um, for the simple reason that um, there's a lot better of the cut of compensation um, it's it's not failing quite so in, in, in some areas um, particularly in this thing where that we've got the cut of compensation there was issues in, in some particular cases where um, when you were using the corrected method um, 
depending on the on the strategy and depending on the on the feature that you're machining. Um, in some cases, it put a very small G1 move in the in the output, and this was causing um, um, the machine to to stop because of the you've come up with radius compensation errors. Um, these have all been um, eliminated. All the files that we have that were failing on this have all been um, tested and, and working on this new strategy. So um, we're confident that it's um, that it's it, it's it's an improvement for this. Um, on the back of this, which is part of the speed improvement, it also allows multi-process management to be done from the PC. So it's it can use multi-cores uh, and multi-threading technology within the operation itself. Um, when you get a complex 2D operation. Um, there is a lot of work gone into the actual approach points on the on the geometry that you machine or the features that you machine. We've got sort of what we call the intelligent approach points where the approach point will automatically be adjusted to wherever it can be in a, a collision free condition. Um, currently what you're getting now is that you will uh, probably get some conditions that go orange that the toolpath will look okay, but actually it's it, there's a collision condition usually with the approach or retract points, depending on where it is and whether you've got cut comp switched on or off. Um, now we'll, we'll be able to see this shortly in a, in a very small movie, but first of all, this obstacle management, um, the, the top picture is showing something that would have happened in um, the versions up to 2016, uh, up to this version, sorry, up to 2017 R1. Um, um, when you added the obstacles in there, in some cases it's going around them, which technically is um, it's collision free, but the, the ones around the clamps on the top of the boss, and that was going through them, it would warn you of them, so the, the toolpath was still going to go orange, um, but um, it, there was um, problems with um, some of the, the, the collisions uh, that you've got inside of there, so the, the new one actually trims the toolpath back and it will give you um, the better result, the, a more intelligent um, result in, in reality. Um, anybody that uses it, the sort of a, a complex tool for a complex feature, so something like this rather than in the 2D rather than the 3D, um, there was areas that once again it would be a, uh, it, it's, it would be colliding with the, um, in, the in the top one there, um, and this has all been improved because it's, it's giving you the correct offset geometry based on this complex tool shape as well. Um, so that's all going to be managed um, correctly with this new profiling strategy. And, and there's a lot of work gone into the, on the, onto the corner management. Um, so there is a lot of options now when we go into, into the corners um, of what you want to do in the corners, whether you want to um, uh, whether you want to actually um, do round corners, um, sharp corners, high speed corners, um, and so on. Um, these are all going to be um, available to you, um, which you're going to see in a second anyway. Okay. Um, and finally, there's just a dedicated area just for rest material management just in the corner, so you don't have to actually pick a previous operation, but you could just pick a select the tool if you wanted to, um, and it would just go out and pick the corners out basically based on what that previous tool is. Um, there is a minimum radius there. That if you put a minimum radius, it's going to discard some areas that are smaller than a, a radius that you want to ignore in reality. So, okay, so if we have a look at a, a small movie of this. So this is a, a strategy itself. So you can see the top two here that are in the magenta color. These are ones that have been converted. So in, in 2016 R2, they would have actually been orange, but in this version, because it's converted, it's just we've opened the file up, they've gone into this magenta color, and it means that we'd have to rebuild them. Um, but when you go into the path lab, what you can see here is that when you switch on the code of compensation, um, the approach retracts are actually in a gouge condition because of the size of the cutter and the offset that's been applied. It does show you this in the, in the path lab, and it would have gone orange and it would have warned you about this. Um, and it's the same with the, any of the, um, the other operations as well. But if I just duplicate these operations, uh, and you can see here, the only thing that I'm going to do basically is just rebuild the toolpath. Um, there's no obstacles being doing because we're checking currently against the feature. 
Okay, so we've got the piece in there, which is correct. So just rebuilding that operation, it's adjusting the start point um, to make sure that there's, there's no collisions anywhere. So when you go into the path lab on the, in here, um, and you went showed the cut to compensation on the path lab, you'll see that there's, there's no collisions anywhere. So this is what we're talking about with these intelligent um, approach points. Okay, so it's, it will adjust these for you automatically. Um, with regards to the, um, the collision control, what we've got here, this is a 2016 R2, so we've got some obstacles set in there, um, and it just went around them, okay, and the second operation actually has got some obstacles in there, and so we've got the obstacle inside of there, but this has gone through them, um, so this is the condition that you've currently got, um, once again, they would have been orange they, um, and telling us in, in your current version, but now it's going to give you exactly the correct result when you just rebuild that operation. So it, um, it takes that operation and it trims the toolpath back um, to whatever value that you've got set in the parameters for how much you want to miss the toolpath by. So it will trim them back to the, um, the obstacles inside of the operation. Okay, so moving on to the the profiling itself, yeah, the parameters are, are probably slightly, uh, they may be, they're, they're pretty much the same, but what you've got in some of these, the little icon next to the high speed options, if you go into the properties here, these are the cornering options that you've got um, inside of here. So we've got the square corners, so it will, just a sharp corner which is slightly different when it comes around a, an external edge. So we've got the sharp corner, the round corner, where it's going to roll around that sharp, sharp edge and put a few more points in the toolpath. Whereas you've got this option called um, Twizzle, which is going to put a very small sort of Mickey Mouse here on the, uh, on the end, based on the radius that you, you, you supply. And obviously that's only on the external ones. Now you do have a different here which is called high speed, which isn't technically a full radius that it um, applies, but it's going to be apply a small rad right onto the to the sharp edges. And you'll see here once we compare it against the, the normal radius and the sharp edge, it is slightly different. So it's not the full roll around the edge, but it's going to go sort of go past it slightly and then just to uh, put a small radius on that, um, that edge to, to roll around a bit quicker. Now there's two final conditions that we've got inside of here which is slightly different, something called brick radius and brick chamfer and the toolpath will obviously go orange then because um, it's a, we're in a collision condition with the, the feature so even though that feature has sharp corners you are technically gouging the corners to put a, a very small radius or a very small chamfer on the part. So it will apply that to the, to the feature for you. Okay, so there's, there's a few things inside of there that you can look at to uh, um, and try to see what's been happening on the 2D machining. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly show you this on the um, pocket here. What we've got, and this is the one that's um, um, under preview, but and, and you're going to see some of these benefits basically on the on the waveform that I'm going to show you um, later on. But this 2D pocketing is what's coming. It's so even though you've got 2D features, you've be able to have the the waveform on the 2D as well. Um, so this is one of the things that's that's on its way. Um, you, it's currently not there. Cause it's under under evalu not in evaluation, but it's under this preview um, license at the moment. But it works exactly the same way. All you've got to do is basically add an operation to your 2D features, but you've got the waveform options inside of there, or you'd set your step down that you want, okay? What you want, whether you want these high feet on the back pass, the micro lift that comes off when it's coming off at the, uh, the back, and, and it will just create a, uh, a 2D waveforming strategy on those features. Um, 
can see that this is a pretty much advanced 2D toolpath in reality. So you've got all the art um, functionality there to be output. Um, we've done a few more improvements onto the, the 3D for the for the arc fitting as well, but these would have been output as um, arcs. So you've got arcs or um, some G2, G3s inside of here when it's be output to the uh, NPNC code. Okay. So these are things that you're going to be able to look forward to. But like I said earlier on, if anybody is interested in in trying this out, um, we can activate the license for you. Um, okay, the toolpath conversion. Um, so this is what we talked earlier on. It's it's a it's an automatic process. So any milling operations that you've got from the prior pre previous operations will automatically be converted. So the parameters are converted internally. And, and it goes from this black condition to a magenta condition, which is effectively you saying you need to rebuild the operation. Now, obviously, I would recommend that you rebuild the operation, but you could also just do a right mouse on that operation and accept. If you didn't want to, if you're happy with what was there, if you didn't want to do that, you can actually just okay accept that operation. Um, and it applies to these mill strategies that you've currently running. Um, and I must stress that it goes to this, the status is going from um, confirmed to not aligned, which is this magenta color. Um, for anybody that's got compass technology, um, we've done quite a few improvements on this as well. So there's a, an interactive conversion for this, for anybody that needs to migrate their compass cycles from one version to the next. Um, it's used basically um, to convert any of the strategies and it applies to the convert the templates um, or convert templates via folder which is from the uh, maintenance menu underneath the cam and and what it does is that it's going to check once it runs this and it converts it there's some rules there to to check um, it will check in the compass rules uh, to be able to check that everything's okay when it's been converted or any of your own cycles that you do create from scratch there's also rules in there to actually check that it's it's valid um, and on the back of that, if you, when we're adding these, you've got this, what we call this CYT editor, um, where we can actually get the parameters from the interface itself uh, and, and check, them, check them out. And you're going to see a little bit of this um, when we run this little video of this, but it's basically it's a, a way of um, maintaining a, a, an accurate conversion and make sure that everything's going to work from one release to the next. So once we, we look at this, so from the maintenance, convert the templates. So you'd select where your compass files are or your compass strategies, which is usually in this folder or your own folder. That's where they're all stored. And as soon as you click on OK, it goes through the, the conversion process of converting all the, your, um, your CYT and your CMP files. It's doing the check process as it's doing it. And once it's finished this, uh, this process, it's going to give you a, um, a log window with a report of if anything's been uh, wrong. So there's the report um, telling you that there's been some errors. Um, it tells you what's, um, there's some problems on the uh, formula that's been put in. All the rest are okay. It tells you what's been converted, but it will highlight them in the list as well. So from that, you can do the right mouse and say, okay, well, fix the compass. And it will pop up this. This is your enhanced CYT editor. You can actually, um, do right mouse and set this one and you can see here I've purposely put a syntax error onto the parameters which I'm now going to fix so I'm going to edit this one and I'm going to change get the syntax correct and as soon as you do OK to this it rechecks it it's OK and the errors are gone okay so it's a it's a tool basically to to improve the checking on, on the compass um, on the 3d side of things um, we've we've updated the 3D engine itself, so the 3D machining engine has been improved. Um, we're always uh, doing improvements, probably on most of the releases that we put out. But there's been an improvement to the engine itself. So this is the group engine for the 3D. Um, the waveform strategy that we talked about on the previous um, customer days, uh, and we did some um, testing on this, it's now been officially released. Um, it's, we've done more testing on this and it's, it's fine, there's no problems on this. 
Um, it's available to everybody to use. Um, I'm just going to go back through over some of the, the improvements on this as well. For anybody that didn't see this or attend the customer days, I'm going to tell you why we, we want to be using this waveform strategy. Um, but also, there's been some rest roughing improvements as well. Um, so anybody that uses rest roughing, there's been improvements where we pick up the previous operation where you don't have to create dynamic incremental stock um, in reality. So it will um, make up a, a, a big improvement to this when we come to do it. So we're going to start off with the rest roughing. So the rest roughing itself, um, now when you create this um, previous operation, you select a reference operation for your rest roughing, okay? Uh, and you select this previous operation, the stock is automatically going to be created based on the reference operation rather than having to create a um, dynamic incremental stock. Now this is very useful because it gets rid of any excessive lifts that's in there um, and that's that's one of the problems that we had. That if, you, if you hadn't created dynamic incremental stock, it would have trimmed the toolpath back but they would have got a lot of extra lifts inside of there and sometimes this, it would create um, excessive passes. Um, so this has been improved for this release. And it means as well that anybody using these for the 3 plus 2, it builds the correct stock for the 3 plus 2 without any need for creating dynamic incremental stock. Um, so as you can see, I've, I've highlighted that, that it does create the need, it reduces that need for the dynamic incremental stock. And this is what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about on this particular piece. So this is 2016 that you've currently got. It created uh, an operation based on the stock, which is just the uh, boundary box of the part. So that would have been your first reference operation. But the second operation, we would have had to create a second piece of dynamic incremental stock from that first operation, um, which was basically this piece here. Um, now we don't need to do that anymore, so it's just a case of picking up that um, previous operation. So we tell it previous operation, tell it what the previous operation was, and it, what's happening in the, internally on the background is we're creating that dynamic incremental stock and adding it to the piece. So it, we're getting rid of one of those processes, and it would do that for each subsequent rest roughing operation. So if you have five rest roughing operations, you, you only have to pick the previous operation and you don't have to create the stock for each one of those before you actually create the operation. So it's reducing this need, that this is the main thing I'm trying to get at, it's, it's getting rid of that need for any dynamic incremental stock that you have to create in the first place. Um, so it's doing that automatically um, without the need for every, uh, any additional stock in the operation. Okay, so I am going to go back through the, um, the waveform, um, this waveform strategy, um, why it's important um, and why we're using it. Um, so because that we've got people here that didn't come on the customer days um, and it's important for, for me to stress why this is, plus any of the new improvements that's been happening on this um, strategy as well while we, when we introduced it. So the strategy itself we're using this basically to get rid of any um, or re increase the material removal rates. This is the main focus of this strategy. Um, we're trying to do this to get the productivity up. Um, and because we can do this and we can usually reduce the number of tools, it usually reduces the tooling cost as well. Um, we've got figures that are going to be released shortly as well about um, some of the figures that we can actually, um, the benefits of this for the tooling that you're using. And, and the cost savings um, and they can be quite dramatic if you can start to get this tooling cost down as well. Um, because it's usually running a lot smoother, uh, the machines can run um, much better, um, so there's, there's less wear on the machines. Um, but the material removal rate itself, um, this is basically a, a, a formula that's, that's, that's taken from, uh, the formula that I've got here has been one that's been taken from the web. Um, it's, and if you get all these things right, um, what you get is that you get numbers like this. And we're going to remember these numbers um, because we're going to use this uh, in, a, in a strategy later on. 
But the material of Noble Ridge, basically, it, it's prolonged that tool life. Um, it cuts the cycle time down. The machine tool can run a lot better. Um, but the, the main areas that we're trying to do, that you, if, for you to get the material removal rates, well, what you need to be get, a, aiming for is to get all of these four things correct. This is, the, this is the main focus of what the waveform does. And once you can get all of these correct, um, then these material removal rates can be increased dramatically. So, what we're trying to do is we're trying to maximise that depth of cut with this strategy. And to do this, what we do is we, we try to utilise the, the complete length of the tool flute. Uh, and because we can get even wear distributed along the, 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 the flute, and it means that the tool life is going to be increased and it will drive down the tooling costs. Um, and with this, because we're actually cutting usually with a smaller, a larger depth of cut, but with a smaller step over, um, we can usually get the feed rate and the RPM increased. Uh, and what we, the aim of it is, is to actually um, ensure that that chip load is constant. So we're getting a constant um, amount of chip in contact on that. The tool's always in a constant chip load on the part all the time to get the, the best results. Comparing this to a traditional tool path, basically, um, if we, somebody tried to use this and we said, right, okay, we've got a 50% uh, step over um, when we're doing our um, traditional tool paths for roughing, basically what happens is at any point when it comes in to do a cutting direction change, you're in a full width uh, uh, cut scenario. And this is what happens at the feed rate increases, uh, sorry, you have to slow the feed rate down into the corners and the sharp direction change is called this and it's, it's not the best on the machine tool when we're doing this. So you can see this on this particular file here, it's just a small movie of a, of a traditional tool path um, and it, once it does that direction change it will create you a full width cut at some point. Um, there's no getting away from this, um, it's done, it can be found on internal, external corners, um, whether it was a, a boss, um, whether it was a cavity or a core, it's the same condition. At some point, using any of the traditional methods, you're always getting a full width cut. Um, it's very difficult to get away from this, this condition. Um, even when you don't think it's a full width cut, coming into the corners, the, the tool is in contact more, so it's taking more material off, so it's not a constant chip load. And usually what happens is that somebody's actually going to be increasing or decreasing the, uh, the feed rates on the, on the machine to compensate for this. Um, or you put them down slowly, even in the first place. So we're trying to get rid of all this uh, um, thing. And this is what the, um, the waveform strategy does. So as an overview, um, it's going to provide benefits of allowing you to get high feed rates up um, based on what the cutting tool supplier is going to recommend to you. You can usually run at those and increase them. Um, you can run much deeper cuts utilising the full um, width of uh, full flute depth. Um, generally, it's running with a lot less power or load on the machine. You can usually see this because we are taking such a large step over, uh, the power is usually a lot less. Um, less load on the tool because it's distributed evenly right up the, uh, the, the flute rather than just on the tip area. Uh, and it, we can maximise the RPM on the machine. And, and once again, we're trying to increase that productivity. So if we had to compare this against a, a, a normal strategy, um, what's happening is that in the, in the, in the normal one, we've seen that um, sharp direction change. The, um, the waveform one, it's completely different to um, um, toolpath type um, and the, the actual shape of it is different because we're trying to keep that, um, there's no sharp direction changes, smooth um, tangent conditions to the entry of the exit, the step overs are reduced, it's a constant toolpath because we're maintaining the, um, the cutting loads by keeping that constant en engagement all the time within the material. So on that engagement, um, depending on whether it's 
put in internally or externally, externally or a, a convex or a concave area, you will see differences in the in the step over because it will either increase them or decrease them to maintain that uh, that chip load. Okay, but because we're maintaining that chip load, the the feed rates can actually be increased overall. So we talked about the pattern um, on a traditional strategy. You on something like this, we'd remove the corners probably, um, and then it's lifted off, going back to uh, to sort of come from the outside in. Um, you get the step over movement, and when it comes into a uh, an area where the tool has to go into, um, you're getting that full width cut condition. Whereas the um, the waveform pattern basically um, it's it's starting from the outside. It's keeping in contact because we note any one piece of uh, um, stock um, how much is in contact with the tool to uh, uh, maintain that chip load and we're going to get rid of any intermittent cuts particularly on the external areas so it's going to stay down as much as possible and when it comes into these internal areas once again it's going to try and stay down maintain the tangency uh, without lifting off um, so the tool paths themselves regardless of whether it's going to be a internal or external you get smooth tangent conditions all the, all the while to be able to um, maintain that chip load um, it means that that uh, machine can get um, run a lot quicker and because of this usually it benefits from any any reduced shaking or vibration on the machine you shouldn't get any squealing into the corners and things like that because it's actually running a lot smoother now the link in itself, um, it will choose the fastest way that it can, depending on where it is on the part. Um, so if it has to, it will stay at depth in these localised areas, but it will retract on the long move. So in, a, in an area like this, it would probably stay down in this area rather than try and go to the next localised area. So it, it will stay down here, and then it's actually going to uh, lift off and go somewhere else and it moves around where it has to, staying down. There is a parameter to increase the um, um, the amount that it lifts off by, uh, but you can, that's in, inside the parameter, but generally it's going to stay down as much as it, as it uh, has to. And it moves at that depth, can be at a very high feed rate. So uh, when it comes off, there's a, it can lift off at the back as well. Um, so when it needs to, there is this uh, micro lift that we're going to see um, as a parameter for this, where it would actually lift off as well if you wanted to do that. Now, as a general room, um, because it's cutting at the full depth, um, roughly you can take the full depth is, as being either two and a half times the tool diameter and roughly around the 20% radial depth of cut for this. This is a general rule. Um, we, we can go smaller depending on the material or faster if it's a, it's a softer material um, on the radial depth. Um, and you can probably go a little bit deeper after the full width as well. Um, this is just a conservative rule that we've put in for the actual parameters that you want to set up for it. Um, but because it's cutting on that full float length and the, it's, it's distributed, um, you can actually get that higher volumes up there, at higher rate, and, and then the, the wear is distributed down the entire float, not just on the tip. So instead of having to do because if you're cutting just on the tip, you're after going to do regrinds, things like that. There's no point trying to cut just on maybe five millimeters of, um, of, of tip or flute length when you've got 30 or 40 millimeters worth. Once that piece is worn out, you're not getting the best out of the tool. Whereas if you're cutting on the full flute length, um, you're going to get a, bit, a lot more um, work out of that tool that you want. And it also reduces that radial. Um, depth as well, uh, the, the, the forces are reduced, um, so that makes the, the machine run a lot better and there's less pressure on that tool to less forces to the brick because it's distributed evenly as well. And once again, it optimizes that chip thickness. You'll see that the, um, the chip thickness and the chips that come off will be very, um, very nice when it comes off, off, the, off the part. Now for anybody that wants to compare this against the adaptive, which is already in the in the strategy itself. Um, I've already mentioned that this is still going to be, it will be removed in the future at some point. 
Um, I still can't tell you when this is going to happen. It's still there for this release. We don't have any plans to release remove it that I know of for the next release uh, as well. Um, but the waveform is one where all the development is being focused, uh, and this is where any improvements will come. Um, but I mean, if you do want to compare it, the machining times are actually comparable. Uh, the calculation times uh, and the machining times are pretty much the same, ten percent. The levels themselves are calculated slightly different, as are the the offset passes. So the levels are, are when it comes down the part, are, there's a slight difference, but you wouldn't really see anything inside of your parameters when you put them in. It's a little bit more noticeable about um, the the offset passes. Um, we've got the ones for the waveform there, which in, in my opinion look a lot better on the offset passes, um, especially into these uh, into the smaller area, uh, where it's just coming into a, a more localized area, rather than taking the full uh, the the full depth. Um, this is is slightly better in my opinion because it's a shorter toolpath, so it's, it's cutting a lot to, a lot better there. Now, one of the things that they have induced introduced for this release over the top of the, what was put on for the preview that anybody that was using it for the preview is that the is now this micro lift on the on the back pass we did mention that this was going to be introduced um, so if you do want to instead of it staying on the part when it actually comes across on the back back pass um, you can actually just tell it to lift off by a very small amount anything whatever you want it to be really but 0 0.1 half a millimeter is, is enough just to be able to lift off um, go to high feed to the next area and then just drop back down to carry on the cutting okay so this was introduced into uh, this release so the waveform itself I'll just show you this so this was a, um, a, a, a part that we've got here so this is a, a fairly big part that you're going to see here the waveform itself is actually introduced from the um, roughing hybrid so inside the roughing hybrid strategy you've got a drop down method um, for your step over for waveform and once that's activated it will then um, allow you to set the relative um, step downs and retract step downs which are the intermediate slices and you get a toolpath that look, would look quite similar to this um, so if we look at this in a bit more detail we've got these first levels which are, are the larger step downs using usually the full width of the cut, full depth of flute um, there's no, because it's in constant contact with the part, there's no step over here so and there's a lot more points being um, added to this toolpath now as well so you get a lot more arcs output these are the intermediate slices coming back up the part um, that will basically give you the cusp similar to what you get from a traditional strategy and then it repeats that process down the path um, and once you do this when you if you saw this on the inside of the, the kinematics you'll you'll see this strategy so this is the very first step where you've got a, a large step down that it takes in constant contact with the piece and it would only lift off where it has to and when it gets to the profile shape or the, the piece shape depending on how you've got then it starts to come back up the part and gradually you, you, you're still trying to take as much as possible off with the float but those effectively those steps are getting less and less um, and that's going to give you then and it repeats that process down the component to give you the cusp height based on those those uh, the depth of that intermediate slice but the main thing is that it's taking these large cuts first and then the intermediate slices it means, it means that the material removal rate can be um, increased dramatically now when we if we see this on the on the machine itself so this is actually comparing it against a traditional tool path so we've got 7200 millibates per minute 8000 rpm 52 minutes to machine this so this is a 60% step over with a half mil step down so the half mil step down is effectively what we're trying to that's going to give us our overall cusp shape that we're going to try and do on the um, on the waveform strategy you know and this is this is a uh, it's, it's not a piece of steel it's now being piece this that we did for testing 
Um, but you would probably have to do this to be able to get that cusp bite. Um, now when you repeat this and you compare it against the, the waveform, well first of all with the testing you can see that the step over has been reduced from 60 to 12 and a half percent. The spindle speed is staying but we can get the feed rate up. But because we've got a, a large step down and it's that those intermediate slices which are coming back up at half a millimetre to give you that that overall shape which is similar to the traditional strategy. What you're getting is that it can run quicker, we've gone from 52 minutes down to um, uh, 20 minutes, but the, the actual overall shape once it's finished will look pretty much similar because we've got that intermediate slice which has been set set the same. So if you're comparing it from one to the other and we look to that for the overall um, time, I'm going to see what show you in a second. So we'll just let this fine finish off. So these are the still doing the intermediate slices and as I said it repeats this down the part to, to end up with the, the finished shape. So. Okay, so looking at that particular strategy, this is what we were, those are the strategies. So we've first, first of all, we've reduced that tool size. So we're using smaller cutters, but we've got the, uh, we've increased the, um, the feed rates can go up. But the important things that to consider is the machining time and this removal rate, material removal rate. There's a massive difference, so this is why we're using that machining strategy and why we want to uh, use the waveform strategy. Okay, so the why use it? Okay, material removal rates. That's what we're trying to achieve. Get those, get those up. Get the cycle times down. Get the best out of the machines. Increase your production capacity, and because we can reduce those tooling diameters and the tooling costs, that should bring the tooling costs down. Okay, and there is um, less need for re-manufacture costs and the machine should be using a lot less power. That was the, the waveform and we're just gonna go off into the last couple of um, slides now for the for the final improvements that we've done for 2017 R1. There's been some improvements now to the, um, to the kinematics. So we've done some improvements for the quality on this um, you should see, see the differences once you compare it against, um, uh, once you machine it to stock, you should be able to see the difference between the two, the older releases, releases on this new one. The collision checking has been improved as well for the, against the piece, against any of the, um, the machine components. Um, we can also measure distances now between the machine components, so if anybody wanted to, to measure anything, you know, when you get close to a certain area, there is all the um, facilities there to be able to measure and just pick the distances up from one piece to another. Uh, there's a new menu now for the shift and the right mouse, um, which allow you to set the graphics areas, um, other options for your, um, your video captures. So if you wanted to actually set some video capture options just to actually machine record just on the screen rather than anything else, you can do that and it was it's all from inside of there. And once you pop that up, then you can set it to where it's uh, been saved, what it's, what the output's going to be, okay? And it's just going to capture that one little movie of the simulation rather than the whole side of things. So there's been a few improvements on the um, on the kinematics as well. And um, I think that just brings me to the to the end of this um, webinar. Okay, so I'd just like to say thanks everyone for. Um, for attending the webinar. Um, I hope you found it useful.